Hello guys, Alan here. Welcome back to my workshop. So uh, it's time for me to get back into the compressor project and uh, there's a lot to do. Um, you might just see some of the items listed up there. But I've decided I want to start by finishing up the changes that I need to make to the um, crankcase. So including that of course is shortening or uh, turning the end of the crankshaft down to three quarters of an inch. Sorting something out for the oil fill hole. Uh, I've also got to uh, trim this plate to shape, do some pulleys, there's quite a bit to do. So let's get into it and I think I'm going to start off by attacking the crankshaft. Okay, so I've got the crankshaft set up in the lathe, uh, put it in the three jaw since that was what was mounted, expecting I'd have to take it out and uh, put, use the four jaw and clock it properly, but I thought I'd give it a quick try first. So let's uh, just zoom in. So let's uh, try and zero that properly. That's probably pretty close. Uh, okay, so let's see what happens when we uh, turn him around. Well, <laughs> that's pretty bloody good, isn't it? There's maybe maybe two tenths. I assure you, there's nothing up my sleeve. That might be two tenths, <laughs> it might only be one. Anyway, let's move the uh, along uh, closer towards the uh, the web and uh, have another look. Now, <laughs> I've got to say, <laughs> I'm going to take that, that's luck, and I'm going to take it. Right, let's get set to do some machining up this end. Right, so I'm set up for the first cut, and I'm, my first pass I think I'll do 30 thousandths depth of cut. Uh, okay, well let's see how that goes. Let's have a bit of a look at that. Yes, 8154. Um, and it looks like I've actually got 8154 at both ends too. Which isn't to be taken for granted with this old girl. 8154. Okay. So 65 there to come off. Alright, well, let's see what we got after the final pass. Hmm, 748. I'm not very happy about that. Overshot by uh, 2000. Not sure exactly how that happened. Stupidity. I don't know. And 748.25. Uh, well, it's not the end of the world. Because I'll, I'll be making the pulleys. I'll just um, get it. Yeah, 748.2. I'll get a second try at um, getting a good fit. I'll just uh, bore the pulleys out to slightly undersized. Yeah, well. Just got to um, sham for the end here now. Right, well let's finish with the crankshaft in the lathe. Alright, so I've been reflecting on that uh, cock up of going two thousandths of an inch undersized on the three quarter inch uh, shaft and uh, considering options and I think the best option is in fact to change horses and call it a 19 millimeter shaft because that's another common size anyway, 19 millimeter, 19 millimeter shaft with a six millimeter key. Um, pulleys for that size are readily available and I've got to make one anyway. 
Um, so I, I've done some uh, test work and I tried using a 19 millimeter um, reamer and it went oversized uh, by about uh, Oh, I don't know, a little bit anyway. I wasn't too happy about that. So then I decided I was going to have to use the adjustable reamer. And they're a bit tricky to use. You've got to be very really careful how you set them. So I've set up a test piece and used it to um, get the, um, the, the reamer set right. And as I've got it now, um, you better see that that's uh, pretty damn close to, to 19. It's a hair on the right side, well half a hair on the right side of 19. So I'm very happy with that. And uh, I've got a, the necessary to cut the 6mm key. So that's, gonna, that's actually a pretty snug fit in this, but that, that's all to the good. Um, now obviously you push that thing through. So with all that lot sorted, I'm good to go with this pulley for the uh, the compressor. You see there's heaps to, to work with there. Uh, not going to be a problem at all. So I'll drill this out and ream it to 19 using my now correctly set reamer. Cut the keyway and uh, start getting back on track. So I started boring this pulley out. Uh, I want to get to 19 millimetres. I've got about 0.4 of a millimetre on the diameter to go. So I'm going to try and sneak up on that. Okay, let's see what uh, size we're at now. Yeah, it's still quite a bit if I try and do it with the reamer, so I think we'll take another cut and get closer. Let's hope we have an overshot. Right, I don't know whether you can see that, but we're sitting on 18.97 at the moment. The brooch guide starts in the hole. Yep, so um, I'm going to call that on size. Close enough to one size. I might bring the crankshaft over and show it the hole. Yeah, they'll go on there all right. I'm happy with that. So, time to do some keyways. So, before I can do any uh, keyway broaching, I'm going to have to take my uh, inch thick plate off, <laughs> off the uh, off the press. So I think I'll start by lowering it to a, an easier to manage height. I forget how much this thing weighs but I can tell you it's not light. the hard part. I'm going to decide where to put it. Let me go over there for now. Ooh. I'm so used to seeing this with the plate on the top it looks rather bare at the moment. In the days before I had the table raising hoist mounted on this press that would have been a big deal. Right, the uh, crucial thing with doing these uh, keyway brooches 
is that you press them vertically. If they go cockeyed, they can break, which would be bad. Now I'll get a square to sight it. It's looking pretty good that way. And pretty good that way at this point. Get ready to give it a bit of lubricant. So, I've got an ice cream, ice cream container with a lump of foam in the bottom ready to catch the uh, brooch when it comes out but uh, I think I'll lift this tray up one notch so there's uh, changes I've made to the hydraulic press made it a lot easier to use than was or would have been the case so let's get some uh, stuff on here and uh, get started now I've had a bit of issues with the uh, the air cylinder on this so I don't know how well that's going to behave itself that's still pretty good let's give it a burst and see what happens So pretty good. So we run out of travel. We got to uh, do ourselves a more travel. Well that's the first pass nearly through. This uh, brooch is quite a tight fit in that uh, guide so it probably won't drop through. We'll see. Yeah so the brooch is still a bit tight in that guide so I'm thinking a bit of a, a gentle push with this dowel pin should get the job done. So that's the first pass done and I'll check all of these throats to make sure there's no chips that get in the way of the next pass. Okay, so getting ready for the second pass and so we use these um, shims which will force the um, brooch to go over. But first up we've got to go back to our start position. It's done the second pass with the um, um, shim in. Now um, I'm not sure actually how many shims I'm supposed to use for this size keyway. It's looking actually that that might be about it. So we'll have to check the depth of the um, the keyway. So we've done two passes with the brooch and the keyway. This is six mil key fits nicely in there. Question though is the keyway deep enough. Perhaps you can see there's just enough of the bore there to get a, a caliper reading. It's not very exact to this. 12.69 and in the bottom of the thing we got 9.6 
So um, 9.6 and 12.69 means that we've got slightly deeper than 3, which is what we need. So happy with that. And now I can knock the uh, guide out, which I'll do. It was a fairly firm fit, so it isn't going to fall out. Alright, finally it's out. One pulley with 6mm keyway. I made a point of putting the keyway under the screw so that when I put the screw in it will clamp on onto the uh, key. Okay, time to put the keyway into the end of the crankshaft now. So this uh, fixture which I used for holding the crankshaft actually worked out really quite well. It looks a little bit strange perhaps but it has several advantages. The piece that I wanted to machine is hanging out in the breeze so it was very easy to get all around it with the dial gauges to make sure I had the alignment correct. It also allowed the crankshaft to be rotated in, in situ. Um, that was important because I wanted my new keyway to be exactly over the top of the existing um, Woodruff key cutouts. It also has the advantage of making it easy actually to video what I was doing. So odd though it looks it actually worked out really well. So I had several different goes at getting the alignment set with the dial gauge but in the end I decided to do away from the move away from the DTI and use a plunger style gauge and that worked out pretty well as you can see here. Checking the alignment in the vertical plane. Yeah, I'm happy with that, it's quite good enough for what I'm trying to achieve. Checking the alignment in the Y direction. That's good enough for me. Go with that. To check, to check the rotational alignment of the crankshaft in the collet chuck, I've got a gauge block stack poked into one of the what's left of um, one of the Woodruff keyholes and um, I think it's probably just good enough to see that we've got this somewhere near right. Uh, that's good enough for me. Now before I start milling there's another consideration. There's a hole in the end of this crankshaft which is pretty much the uh, full depth of this piece of the, uh, of the shaft. The hole is 9.5 diameter and the shaft's 19, so the difference between the two being 9.5 means the wall thickness um, is something like 4.25. Now my uh, key slot is going to be 3 deep. 3 from the 4.25 leaves not a whole lot. So um, originally without having thought it through I was going to just do a full length keyway, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think it'll leave the shaft too weak. Um, I've decided the key doesn't need to be any longer than 20 to do its job so I'm going to do it the 20 back this way and so it will finish up about here somewhere. So that means instead of using a, a four uh, flute cutter and going in from the end I'll have to use a two flute cutter and, and then do it as using it as a slot drill. So uh, I've got this all aligned but the next thing or the last thing I need to do is find the centre which I'll do with um, one of these wobblers, one of these guys, won't bore you with that, I'm sure you've seen it a dozen times, so I come back when I've got the milling cutter in there ready to go. Okay, I think it's time for the fun to begin. Time to check what we've got. Well, we'll start with five because that's what the cutter is. It's narrower than five, that's interesting. Yeah, it's not quite 4.8. 
I was going to do a half millimetre step over each side um, and I think that's still the right thing to do. Right, let's see what we got. Right, that's tight on 5.74. Right, so we're going to step over a bit further. Um, so the last cut was a step over of 0.5. I'm stepped over 0.62 now. Well, that's 5.95. Yeah, that fits quite nicely. You can see that's going to push in there without any problem. And if it in fact puts up a fight, I'll just very lightly sand it. But I'm, I'm happy with that, that uh, keyway size. Well I changed my mind and I went round uh, with another 0.01 and the slot now is uh, a good fit for 6. Um, so that should make it easier to uh, get the assembly happening. So let's pull this setup down and um, do a test fit. Okay so that's my slot. I think you can see that's my bit of key. It goes in there just so. So happy with that. And now for the big question, will it go in here? Just uh, back out a little bit, make it easier to keep in frame. Um, all right. So it's quite a snug fit. Perhaps you can get the sense of that. Put a bit of effort into it now. Right, so we push down. Oh. Right, I think you get the idea, it's fairly firm fit. But that's all right. Um, with the thread in the end, with the thread in the end of the uh, shaft here, it'll be quite easy to make an, a little something to pull the pull it on, pull the pulley on. Anyway, there we go. So I'd say that snatched uh, victory from the jaws of defeat. Uh, I was a bit despondent when I uh, first turned this shaft two thou undersized. But in fact it's all worked out fine. So that's a couple of items crossed off the list and a bit closer to um, being able to reassemble the uh, the engine. Right, it's a hole down there that you probably can't see but it's an oil drain hole that's relevant when the um, crankcase is oriented laying down like that. It allows oil to drain back into the, uh, the sump. But when I go to a vertical configuration, which is what I'm doing, I need to block that off. So I've covered this earlier. I've made a screw, uh, we'll go in there, and it's going to engage in two locations. It's threaded into that hole, but it's also loosely threaded into a hole in the outside. So I'm going to use Loctite 263 to, um, uh, in this area here, to hold the screw properly. And then on the outside of the case where I don't want it to leak to uh, atmosphere, I'm going to use this 577. So, I'm going to put the screw in from the outside. You can see it's really loose in the outside here. And that's why this 577 will be good. So, I want to keep going until we're just about to start on that hole there. And now I've got uh, thread sticking out in both places. So I'll start by putting a drop down there where it's going to thread in. 
with my 263 and I don't care if it goes all over the place put a good squirt on there all right. and then on the outside I'm going to get a good squirt of this stuff around there and hopefully when we screw it in we'll get it sealed in both locations but held in place by the Loctite on the in inner screw yes. plenty of Loctite there to do the job so clean up time no, it's got that screw installed. Um, yes, there's a squilly in different sorts of Loctite. <laughs> One for every occasion. And they're all expensive. Anyway, so that screw should be... Uh, the Loctite for, uh, 263 should really hold that screw tightly into that uh, bed of thread. The thread on the outside is very loose. Alright, job done. Okay, so one of the jobs is to make an adapter so that the oil fill hole is uh, pointing upwards. <laughs> Much better chance of getting oil into it. So basically I want to make a fitting which will screw into the original socket, which is 3 quarters 10 uh, UNC, and go through a right angle and uh, then have a plug on top. I've had several ideas about how to do it, but what I'm going to try first is take a plumbing fitting, which is half inch... Um, Whitworth I guess, half inch BSP and uh, it's a right angle bend uh, with a female on one side and a male on the other and I think there's just enough meat on the male part to turn it down um, and put a new three quarter inch thread on it and because it's a relatively quick and easy thing to try that's what I'm going to try first so to do it I've um, mounted the piece in the four jaw chuck and trued it as best I can. Uh, there's a machine surface on the inside here but uh, I'm not sure what that's actually true to. But anyway as each jaw goes over it's on about the zero so that's about the best I'm going to do with it. So uh, as I said it's relatively uh, cheap and if it works it's great, if it doesn't well I haven't lost a lot. So let's see how we go. So I'm going to start by getting this down towards three quarters of an inch. Uh, taking very light cuts. <laughs> Should be somewhere near it. Seven four nine. That's pretty good. Right, we'll see if we've got enough of a scratch there to check that I have actually got. 10 TPI engaged, not that easy to tell. In fact, I can't tell because the remnant thread is 14 TPI. So I can see the 14 all right, but I'm struggling to see my 10. All right, well, this is a bit of a lash up, so a little bit of paper wrapped around the job and a pen strapped to the, uh, the tool. And I'm just moving the lathe by hand and hopefully this will give me a line that I can use to well, it seems to be working all right isn't it and properly check my thread pitch so did I have 10 yes I did after all that but that's a very important check Well, 
Well, that's looking pretty good. So I think you can see how that's uh, all going to work now. And I've got a plug with the taper thread on it. Um, I could even, if I wanted to get carried away, make a dipstick, put a little uh, dipper on the end of that. But anyway, I can sight down through there. I'll be aiming to fill it up at about level with the bottom here. And perhaps you can see looking down in there, there is a nice convenient little um, ledge or shelf which I'll be using as the level setter. So, I think that all worked out rather well. Of course it's all theoretical at the moment, but the omens are good. Alright, I think I'm ready to uh, put this lot back together. So first up, I'm going to get some oil, so obviously I've cleaned everything out. So it's all an oil free zone at the moment, so squirt a bit of oil around. Some up there, get that bit of paint out, just fill off the oil can. Right, oil in there. Shaft in. Plenty of oil on him. All right, bit of oil on the crankshaft. We can drop him in. Right. Okay, so let's see if we can get this guy back together. Last check to make sure it misses everything. It looks like it does, so that's good. So, 100 inch pounds on these things. Right, it's got them both to 100 inch pounds. That still seems to turn alright, so that's good. Uh, right, bend these tabs over a little bit. Right, well, that's that. And of course, it's a lot simpler because I'm not worrying about any of the cam gears or anything like that. So that's good. Splash a bit more oil on it. And up there. So, um, I don't have a paper gasket to put back here, I don't think it has a, a roll as a shim, so I'm not worried about that, it wasn't very thick anyway, so I'm going to use this um, stuff, RTV silicon, and um, hope for the best. Right, never used this stuff before, so we'll see how we go. Let's start here, oh, I don't suppose it matters where I start. Never having used this stuff before, I don't know whether I'm putting on way too much. It's a distinct possibility I am. Now, I wonder if a, a wet finger will work to um, smooth it out a little bit. Right, 
Okay. Imagine that's going to squeeze out everywhere. Probably the main place to getting some oil. Alright. Okay, well that's on the, these bolts are all the same length. We'll leave them at that for now, so I don't squeeze all the good stuff out. I don't know whether that will make any difference, but I'll stick a nail in it. So anyway, the instructions say to do what I have done, which is hand tighten it until some of the stuff starts to squeeze out. And then wait. For an hour. And then uh, tighten an additional half turn. Right, well... So put the bungs back in the holes, keep the greeblies out, and uh, come back in an hour's time. So reassembling the two halves of the crankcase seems to have gone just fine. I've got a, a nice little uh, bead black sealant squeezed out all the way around, so I must have had about the right amount, which is good. I've also put a cover over the um, exhaust port here, and one over the inlet port. Uh, also held or sealed up with that black goo. So at this stage the uh, crankcase is pretty well closed up again. So what else have I done? Well, I've made a head gasket and uh, that's made out of um, this material Garlock 2500. It's impressively easy to work with um, it's quite easy to accurately punch the holes and cut it out, so very happy with that. I've also cleaned up the cylinder head, or the valve plate, so let's have a look at that. So I've decided that my best option for trimming the valve plate that I've made is to uh, mount it on the rotary table and do a set of uh, straight lines uh, trimming uh, pieces off. So let's move the rotary table over and get it set up. You may have gathered, this beast is fairly heavy. This uh, arrangement allows me to set it down quite gently, pick it up and set it down quite gently. Need a bit more height, or a bit less height, I suppose you'd say. You start off a bit lower. Right. There you go. Safely landed. All right. Let's get this set up. Okay. So set up on the rotary table and milling roughly to the lines and exact uh, positioning isn't important. I'm doing a two millimeter depth of cut.
So I think that's looking pretty good and I'll carry on and get the rest of it done. I just thought I'd mention the, the setup I was using to set the cutter path by using this simple arrangement with the square. The, uh, the line here is the, not the offset, but certainly the cutter path. So with that done, all I have to worry about is how far in it's cutting. Um, so that's, that's worked out pretty well. Also this piece here was quite large, so I've just hacked that off with the, uh, the bandsaw. So, on we go. So that all works out pretty well, and here's the, uh, the finished product. Uh, all I've done since you saw it on the milling machine was uh, show it to the, the belt sander and clean the corners up a little bit. So that'll sit on there, or at least it will, if I put it on the right way up. So I've got a collection of bolts, some special ones. And uh, some ordinary ones. Come on, get in there, etc. So they all line up pretty well. So the next move will be to um, drill or mill the uh, air passages that these valve plates need for the um, reed valves to work. And uh, I think we've made a lot of progress. Okay guys, well that's going to be it for this episode. I'm already way over time again. Um, I didn't achieve all that I wanted to, but I did get quite a few items ticked off. We got the crankshaft done, the trimmed the adapter plate, got the gasket sorted, the lock tabs, oil uh, drain plug thing, pulley made, sealed the inlet exhaust port. So, did get a lot done. Um, I'm just useless at estimating how long things are going to take. Um, most of it was enjoyable. Uh, of course, I didn't care very much for the feeling when I under turned the crankshaft undersized. But the end result uh, that I came up with was pretty good, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And um, I've included uh, a sneak preview uh, of uh, what it's all going to look like. Uh, and hopefully, in the next episode, maybe, uh, we'll be able to see it uh, actually running and uh, puffing some air. Uh, I don't think I'll get to uh, driving it from the um, petrol engine um, Briggs & Stratton next time. But uh, at least hopefully we'll be able to see this thing producing some air. So anyway, that's it for now, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.